Check out all this Atari stuff I have. I've got an enormous Jaguar poster in my study, an authentic framed press photograph that used to get sent out to magazines, a framed magazine ad for Doom, and a budding but nothing to sneeze at collection of Lynx games and a Lynx 2. I just like Atari, the consoles, the games. You could say I'm fucking obsessed. Atari gave the video game industry the turbocharge it needed, and gave companies like Nintendo and Sega a shoulder to stand on to get started. That's why when I see gormless twats standing in a thumbnail with a confused look on their face or a soy mouth with the text, Why did the Jaguar fail? Totally and completely insufferable. These people are financial parasites, laser focusing on the worst aspect of the history of a console instead of just finding some games to enjoy on it. Agonizing over why a console failed is so pointless and the childish fixation with comparing consoles in history failing the hardest is like some baby shit kids on the schoolyard would talk about. Why can't you just enjoy games? Every platform has enjoyable games on it, no matter how hard it failed. Even the Virtual Boy has Tolero Boxer. Even the 3DO has Gex and Killing Time and the Need for Speed, and so does the Jaguar have a small but great library of games, amongst some bad ones. So as a middle finger to the clickbait simpletons of YouTube who want to salivate at the mouth thinking about how the Jaguar sucked big time, lol, I'm going to tell you some interesting historical facts about why it was well received at the time from the people who matter. 10 facts about the Jaguar you probably didn't know because they won't get you ad revenue if you talk about them on YouTube. Number 1. In a 1994 issue of Edge magazine, John Carmack praised the Jaguar, calling it the best hardware on the market at that time. He then goes on to do some fair critiques of some aspects of the hardware, which is totally understandable. But it's hard to argue with John Carmack when he says it was the best at the time. Number 2. I myself interviewed industry veteran Olivier Narlet in 2012 on my blogspot. In fact, it's still there if you want to go read it, and I will link it in the description. He recounted that as a young programmer, when Atari caught talk of his Super Burnout project with the developer collective Shen, they did everything they could to help him get the game out on the system as they were so enthusiastic about it. He loved the Jaguar and had nothing but good things to say about it. Atari ended up using Super Burnout really prolifically in their advertising as well, so you can see in real terms how passionate they were about it. Number 3, a 2018 interview on Arcade Attack with Tal Fiumke Bulo, an ex-QA tester, recalls some amazing insights into what fun it was to work at Atari back in the mid-90s, including working down the hall from the developers, being randomly given hover strike levels to design, and even being asked by Jeff Mente himself to record voices for Defender 2000. Read the interview through the link in the description as it's quite fun. Number 4. Speaking of Jeff Minter, if you don't know who he is, he's a legend in the Jaguar community and a revered developer of Tempest 2000, Defender 2000, and the Virtual Light Machine for the Jaguar CD, which is a precursor to all of the fancy visualizers you'd see in concurrent CD consoles. Number 5. Fight for Life is a maligned game for the Atari Jaguar with a really stellar premise where you gain more moves as you defeat opponents, creating what is in effect a customizable fighter as you go. That said, Francois-Yves Bertrand developed the entire game himself with assistance only for the textures and sound. Prior to developing for the Jaguar, he actually worked in the R&D department for Sega AM2. Quite a pedigree. Number 6. Let's talk about Jeff Minter some more because I like talking about Jeff Minter. In 1994, the online publication Atari Explorer interviewed Minter and asked him how he got into Jaguar development. By 1994, Atari had become aware of Minter's reputation as an ST developer, and after the 1992 Jaguar DevCon which he attended, they invited him to Sunnyvale to develop some demos on the Jaguar hardware. After minimal work, he was able to get an amazing warping effect working and according to him, from that point forward, his soul belonged to Jaguar. Number 7. This isn't necessarily about Minter himself, but he does mention something interesting in this same interview about what the Jaguar was actually supposed to be. Here's the exact quote verbatim. 
The Jag is particularly exciting, as it's the first console platform to offer gaming satisfaction to two previously separate segments of the market, the Nintendo, Sega area. In essence, what he's saying, and this was backed up by John Carmack in that Edge interview by the way, the console was bridging the gap between generations and also demographics by providing an extremely powerful 2D machine and a powerful 3D machine capable of then cutting edge effects like hardware warping and garage shading, so it has universal appeal. A noble goal, just one that didn't really work out. Sorry, one more Jeff Minter thing. He's always been obsessed with furry livestock, being furry livestock himself. He had two pet sheep at the time the aforementioned interview was conducted called Molly and Flossie, and if you listen carefully, that is their bleating used in Tempest 2000. What fun. Number 9. A fun piece of trivia about Alien vs Predator, if you've ever played it, is that the Marine's portrait is actually Sean Patton. Sean Patton was a producer of Iron Soldier, another prolific Jaguar game, and was such a huge fan of Aliens that he built his own costume for the Colonial Marines and wore it for the shoots for the game. And finally, most importantly, number 10. If you post videos with thumbnails like this, you're a dense clown and should never be allowed to talk about the Jaguar again. Well, there we have it. I've made a very interesting purchase that should be on the way soon, that should alleviate a bottleneck I've had getting Jaguar software into review. And while I have more than enough to get reviews out in the foreseeable future, this will make my Jaguar insights a lot more interesting. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.